Hi everyone, Jane here from Plain Jane Paints and today I've just got a quick tutorial for you where I'm going to show you how you can transfer any image onto your painted furniture. And the best bit is you don't need any special products or special mediums, you can do it simply by using chalk paint. I really love this technique because it basically means that you're completely unlimited in what you can actually put onto your furniture in terms of images. But any image that you can find and print off for yourself, you can actually transfer that image directly into your paint and it's really, really easy to do. I'm just going to show you how I do it on this little pot cupboard. So I've already painted a base coat onto this little cupboard and you can see I've done a little bit of aging already because it's going to be a real sort of vintage look. Um, so I did a coat of um, mud pie with some of the texture medium and then I painted over the top in sprout, which is this beautiful green colour. I think it's a much underused colour and I absolutely love it, especially for this style of furniture. Um, and then I've sanded back to give it that sort of uh, rustic finish. If you want to know more about how to do that technique with the texture medium so that you get this aged um, appearance, there is another video on the website, um, the rustic textured finish a video. So you can check that out too if you want to see how I got this sort of finish before I started. Now this is the area where we're going to be putting the image and I absolutely love these um, little botanical drawings. I think they're really pretty and I can just see that that's going to look really, really nice on that piece of furniture. So one thing to say about um, image transfer is that if you've got any words, then you need to make sure that you print them off in reverse because we're going to turn this over and we're going to press it into the paint. So if you didn't reverse your um, letters, then the word would come out back to front. So when you're printing your image, just make sure that you, if you've got any uh, writing, that you flip the image first. If you don't have any writing, then you don't need to flip the image. Now, the other really important thing to say is that you do need to print out your image on a laser printer. So this won't work on an inkjet printer. You need to have toner in your paper for it to um, be absorbed into the paint. So if you don't have, if you only have an inkjet printer at home, then you can just go to Officeworks or somewhere like that and get it printed out there. Now, the other thing to say is that any background color that you have with your image is going to come out when you do the image transfer too. So if you print directly onto a white background, that isn't going to transfer. That's going to come off when we take the paper off. So if I um, use these as part of the image transfer, these edges, then that, that white wouldn't transfer into the paint because there's no, actually no toner there. So, but here where we've got this sort of creamy color, that color is going to transfer into the paint. So I've chosen the color parchment here as a base coat because that's the closest color to this. And then we can always do a little bit of um, painting in over the top if we want to blend it in a little bit more. Now, so that there's less work when we have to remove the paper, I'm actually going to cut around this image and I'm not going to use these white borders as part of the transfer. So here's the image all ready to transfer onto the furniture and this is very very easy to do. I'm going to show you how. So this base coat of parchment is completely dry. I just did that to get the coverage and then we're going to actually use a wet coat of paint to transfer the image into. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a second coat of parchment over that inside area. Now you want to make sure you use a nice generous coat of paint here because you need a nice layer that's thick enough for the image to transfer into. So not too thick, but just make sure you've got a nice generous coverage. And now we're just going to take the image and we're just literally going to press it into the paint. You want to make sure that the whole image is completely stuck down into the paint. So just press all over the piece of paper and make sure that there aren't any bubbles or raised areas. I used a bit of Glad Wrap just to rub across the surface of the paper, but you don't have to do this. You can just use your fingers or even a, a dry cloth. 
So you just want to make sure that the image is pressed right down into the paint so that the face of the paper is completely um, stuck into the paint and all that toner is going to get sucked into the paint because remember the chalk paint is porous, it doesn't contain a sealer. So that's why this technique will work with chalk paint. This won't work if you use it with any normal paint that contains a sealer. This paint remains porous as it's drying and it's going to suck all the toner from that image into the paint. Now we're going to leave it to dry and it's best to leave it for 24 hours if you can wait that long um, and then you can be really sure that the image will have dried right into your paint. Okay, so this has now had 24 hours to dry and so we're ready to take off the paper and leave the image stuck into the paint. And I'm just gonna show you how to do that. It's super easy. All you need is just a spray bottle of water. And if you don't have a spray bottle, just you can just use a damp rag or something like that. We just really want to just make this paper wet so that we can gently rub it off and leave the image in the paint. Once your paper is damp, you should be able to just rub it off with your fingers and it will just dissolve with the water, leaving the image in the dry paint. Don't use too much water though, you don't want to completely saturate it because the chalk paint will still be porous and for the first 24 hours or so, you can still wet distress it. So you don't want to end up rubbing off any of the paint as well. So you just want the paper to be damp until it starts to dissolve. And when you rub it with your fingers, it'll just ball up and come off and leave the image there in the dry paint. When you're printing, it's good to use a pretty low quality paper. Don't use any fancy shiny paper, just use regular low quality printing paper because this will come off much more easily with the water. I used 400 grit sandpaper just to go around the edges and blur the line of the image. The colors were a pretty good match, so I didn't actually need to paint over and uh, blend it in, but you could do that if you didn't have a color that was an exact match for your background. If your image still looks a little bit blurry and has a bit of a white bloom over it, there's probably still some traces of paper on there. So just keep going until you can see a really nice clear image and the colors are really nice and crisp and clear. Now I just seal the image with some clear wax and then I'm going to go on with some lovely dark brown wax which is going to give it a lovely vintage look. So I just use a small stiff bristle brush just to apply the dark brown wax into all the sort of corners and details anywhere where I wanted to create a bit of a shadow. Next, I took a soft cloth and just softened all the edges of the dark brown wax. I also applied the dark brown wax into all those details that have been created by the texture and then wiped it back off so that it just sort of sat in all the little nooks and crannies. It gives it a really beautiful aged effect. 